Hello everyone, Scott from Carton Cloud here. Today, I'm just going to do a bit more of a deep dive into the new StockTech module from within the Carton Cloud application. So once released, StockTechs will be found under the Warehouse tab um, on the web app. You'll see that we've got the predefined tabs along the top, and we have the filter option as well, where we can filter by customer status and a variety of dates. To add a new stock take, green add stock take option. And then we select the customer we wish to complete the count for. So I've created a coffee customer. So then we've got the name of the stock take. So I'm just gonna call this one December 2020. Now you've got the plan date. Now that's the planned date that it's due to begin. So as you can see, we'll be able to plan ahead of time. So at the beginning of the year, I could plan out my whole year's worth of stock takes. Otherwise, I can do them in real time. It's completely up to you, but the flexibility is there. Now, within the products field, by default, Carton Cloud is going to include all products on the stock take for that customer. However, if you wish to stock take just specific products, you can select them from within this list and it will only be counting that product. Um, so if there's some products within specific customers that you need to complete stock takes on more often than others, you can do that using this tool. However, like I mentioned before, it's just gonna be left blank by default. So it's gonna include all products. Now attributes required for stock take is where we're looking back at the customer settings. As a lot of you are aware, against the customer, we can define what we call purchase order product custom fields, which are things like expiry date, batch number, serial number, things such as that. Now, in order for a stock take to be as accurate as possible, we should be validating each one of those custom fields, which is why by default, we're gonna add all of them here. But if you choose that there are some certain custom fields that don't need to be validated, uh, if you've got um, some, some data where you're just copying perhaps the container number or something like that, you might choose that I don't need to double check that. And in which case, just by clicking the X in the top left-hand corner of the tile, you can remove that attribute to be validated from within the stock take, okay? For me though, I wanna include that, so I'm gonna add that back. Now, the location from and to, Best example for this is let's say Carton Cloud Coffee in my facility is in row A, row B, and row C. Once you start a stock take, you want to finish it before you can start processing orders and checking in containers again. So I might decide that this week I want to just do row A, and next week I might do row B, and the week after I might do row C. So we allow the user to define the range of locations if they want to. Again, by default, it's gonna be blank. So it's gonna ask us to count everything for that customer. Now we also have the ability to include empty locations from within the stock take. Now where that's important is using my previous example, let's say I decide to count all of row A this week. And predominantly, only Carton Cloud Coffee is stored in row A. I might choose to include empty locations so I can validate that where Carton Cloud thinks a location is empty or potentially holds another customer's stock, I can make the user or the counter validate that yes, it's empty or yes, um, there's stock in there, but it's for another customer, okay? So that option is there if you choose. Now, the difference between save and preview and start is really important. The reason we have a save and preview is so you can see that based on the attributes you've selected and based on the filters that you've applied on this page, you can see what the stock take is going to look like and what kind of workload you're in for to make sure that if you need to refine it, you can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to preview as I've got it set here. So you'll see. I'm now presented with my full count. So if I scroll down here, because I've told Carton Cloud that yes, I wanna see my empty locations, they're presented here on the screen. As I continue to scroll though, you'll see there's a lot of empty locations that I need to validate. 
Now, it's obvious that the last location that holds stock for this customer is C0301, but it's also included every location thereafter because I've told it to and I haven't applied a location end range. So I'm not happy with that. I want to refine that a little bit more. So I go back a page and I say, actually, I don't want to check empty locations. So I now want to go through and preview that again. And now it's presented me with a much smaller list, a lot more manageable. So I'm happy with that. Now to start a stock take, you can either press start from this page or we can navigate back a step, double check our attributes one more time. Yes, I'm happy with everything. And I click start. Remember, once I've started a stock take, I can no longer get back to this page. So it's important that we preview, make sure that we're happy before we move on. So I'm going to hit start here. Now what this pop-up is saying, and I'm going to explain it in my own words, is that when we're conducting a stock take, it's really important that no other transactions are happening uh, with any other warehouse staff at that time. What I mean by that is really we should not be doing any uh, sales orders. We should be not checking in any purchase orders. We shouldn't be making moves. It's important that everyone's on the same page and we're not making transactions. Carton Club will be running and looking in the background to make sure that that's not occurring. And we'll present you with some warnings if that does happen. But again, really important best practice is to just not process anything at all um, before commencing and during. Alrighty. So we're presented with our full stock take here. Now this page, uh, you've got the name, the customer plan date and status all along the top. And you've got your full list of locations, your products, the unique attributes. So you'll see we include product, product status on exception. So what I mean by that is by default, we won't tell you if the status is okay. We're gonna assume that the status is okay. Um, for the most part, and we'll say, uh, and we'll display it to you if anything is not okay in terms of the status, all right? Then you've got your base unit of measure, you've got your count input field, and then clicking on this down arrow here, you've got our calculator. Now this calculator is looking back at your product unit of measure settings. So, so long as that's up to date and accurate, you can leverage off this tool to say, Oh, for within this location, I've got one pallet and Carton Cloud automatically knows how many units that is per pallet. Okay, this just ha helps on data entry. It also allows the count teams to not have to carry a calculator. They can leverage off the information that's already within Carton Cloud and help make that count easier. Along the top here, we've got our filters. Now where this is important is this page is, has two options. You can either use a printed count sheet or using a tablet, you can have different uh, team members or different teams within different aisles, however you wanna do it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna filter this count for just aisle A. So I'm gonna set my start range and I wanna tell it to end at A, 01, 03. So if I apply those filters, you'll see that it limits my results to anything from within that range. So where that's important is because it's a cloud-based system, like I mentioned before, I could have one like myself counting on a tablet in row A with my row A filters. And I could have say Tony in row B with row B filters, both on the same, on the same stock take at the same time. But as we're entering our counts, it's being saved to the overall stock take at the same time, okay? Now, let's say we didn't have tablets and we needed to offer a paper-based solution. You'll see we've got the print option here. So by clicking that print option, we generate a PDF document, which is part of our document template service. So we can make changes, we can expose additional fields, whatever might be required, we can add here. Um, along the top, you've got the name and the customer and you've got the location filters. Now, why that's important is if I've got different team members doing different ranges of locations, when those count sheets are being brought back into the office or to the data entry person, they need to know what those filters are 
so that they can get exactly the results that are on that count page. You've got the name, the date, start and finish time, and you've got some extra fields to note down any extras that you find. Um, but again, like I said, uh, this is a document template, so it can be updated if required. Okay, so this we've handed out the count sheet and the team members have gone out and counted it and they've brought it back in. How do we then go about entering that data back into the stock take? So if I put my cursor in the count quantity, like I mentioned before, we can enter directly into the white space or we can leverage off the calculator. So just using my keyboard, I can tab across to the down arrow, hit enter, and then open up the calculator. So I know for this one, I've got one unit. I'm gonna save that. And it automatically moves down to the next one. So I'm just gonna go through and quickly enter these counts. So I'm gonna open up the next one, six cartons, save, move to the next one, one pallet, save, move to the next one, four cartons and three units. Okay, so you'll see as I enter the values, Carton Cloud automatically looks back at that product and makes the, the calculations by itself. Okay, we hit save. So you'll see there's the green tick going on there. All that's doing is it's telling us that it's saving it in real time. Um, again, just reiterating, that if I had different teams on tablets, they could be both independently entering their own counts, but it's all being saved in real time. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove those filters and we're just gonna go through the rest. So I've got the little counts below me here, so bear with me. Three units, sorry, three units. Next one is one pallet. Now, just before I move on, you'll see at the top here, there's the add stock option. So what do we do when we find product that is sitting in, the, in a bay that isn't noted from within here? We can click add stock and we tell the system what warehouse location we found those goods. So let's say we found them in C0102 and we found um, this particular product here. We can define the status. So let's say we found it and it was damaged. It might have a time through it or something like that. We can select that here. For me right now though, the status is gonna be okay. How many did we find? Again, we've got the, inbuilt calculator if required, I found one unit. We select the expiry date. Now again, what's being displayed on this screen is attributes based on the product and the customer. So we'll present you with any attributes that need to be filled, up, filled in in order for us to add that product into the system. So I'm just gonna add the batch number and click save. We get the success message, we say okay, and there you go, it's automatically added that value into our account. Okay, so again, like I mentioned before, I'm just gonna go through and finish this off. Once I've entered everything in, I then just hit count complete in the top right hand corner. So what it's saying is that now we're gonna be progressed on to the variance results. So we're gonna display uh, what your counts look like in comparison to what we've got recorded in Carton Cloud and provide you with an option to double check those counts. We hit count complete. So now we're presented with our full count result in comparison to our system quantity. We have our predefined filters along the top like we talked about before and I can just filter for variances. So you'll see um, that I've got a couple of variances here um, that I need to take care of. Now I can print out this variance list, which again is a document template that we can adjust, um, where we're now going to display what you counted, what the system believes there is, and the variance that's been caused. Now the team members can go out and validate that if required. Again, just like we worked through before, you have the option to filter by locations and print that out. So you can say, 
you know, Tony, I want you to go and just check the variances within uh, row B. Okay. Now, within Cart and Cloud, we've made a tool that allows it easier for us to try and make system uh, movements to try and balance out your stock take. What I mean by that is this example here. So you'll see we've got the same product, the same attributes, and we're up in one location and we're down in another. Now, although there's an issue with our stock, uh, with our location accuracy, sorry, there's no issue with our total quantity. So in order to solve this, what we've done is we've created this recommendations tool. And what will happen is Carton Club will say, well, we could actually move one from this location and put it in this location to balance out the stock. So if I click this recommendations tab, you'll say that it's going to move from C0301, one uh, bag of beans, to C0102 to balance out our stock. So I'm going to hit confirm move. Now you can choose to unconfirm if you wish. If there was a list, you could say, actually, I don't want to do that. I just want to make the adjustment. But I'm going to confirm this move. So you'll see if I now filter for variances, I'm now just left with those other two because Carton Cloud's done the move, it's no longer a variance, okay? So it just allows the system to try and work for you, try and figure out what we can balance out automatically just with straight warehouse location to warehouse location transfers. So no adjustments, just moves to try and balance things out. So once you're left with your final variances and you're happy with the final counts, again, if the team members went out and they said, actually, there was 41 there, no worries. The system's updating them in real time and that variance has been adjusted accordingly. So once we're done, once we hit complete stock take, Carton Cloud will then go and finalize those adjustments. And what I mean by that is just like how we make adjustments in the system now, we create a sales order or a purchase order adjustment record, depending on whether we're taking stock out or putting stock into the system. So I'm going to hit complete stock take. And this is just telling you that those adjustments will occur. And if I hit complete stock take now, Carton Cloud has presented me with the final results. So again, I can filter um, for just variances. I can filter for just locations and I can export the final count. Now, why we provide an export and we also provide that in Excel is because Many organizations do a lot of financial analysis at the end of a stock take. You might want to run your accuracy percentage. And in order to achieve that, we've provided you the data in full in Excel. So you'll see that we've got the name, the customer, what date it was planned, and when it was physically started and when it finished. Okay, and we provide you with all of the data that we validated today. So you can do what you need to with that, present it to your end customer if required. Um, that's all available to you. I'm just going to close that. So once we're done, we just hit close. And now you'll see that now that count has been lodged under our complete tab that we talked about before. And the final thing that I'll show you now is just that Carton Cloud has gone in and created that adjustment sales order automatically for us. So if I go and look at my sales orders for Carton Cloud Coffee, you'll see that based on the stock take that we did that we named December 2020 and it has also put the date there for us. If I click on that and I check the products, you'll see that it's taken out the three and the one units from those locations and it's flagged it as an adjustment. So I just wanted to show you the process from when you complete that stock take, how Carton Cloud goes and automatically does those adjustments for you. Well, that pretty much covers it, guys. We hope you enjoy it. It's been a lot of work for us um, and we look forward to hearing your feedback. Thanks very much.